All right, so now that we know what the multiplier is and we know the various equations behind the multiplier, we're going to look at some scenarios here. We're going to use the our, our uh, MPS, MPC, and we're going to figure out some multipliers. So for example, um, let's assume citizens spend 90 cents of every extra $1 they earn. We're going to further assume that the real interest rate, the R percentage decreases, causing a $50 billion increase in gross private investment. We're going to calculate the effect of a $50 billion increase in gross private investment on U.S. aggregate demand. So this is a fairly standard multiplier problem. To solve these types of problems, this is what we have to do. First thing we have to find out is what is our MPC and our MPS. Then we need to know what is the correct multiplier we're going to use. Then we got to know what our initial change is in whatever the variable is that changed. So whether it be gross private investment, government spending, etc. And then you're going to go ahead and solve the equation by taking the multiplier and multiplying it by that initial change in consumption, and gross private investment, whatever it might be. So let's go ahead and apply those steps to this question right here. So before we go on there, the first thing you need to look at is what is, in, is what is the NPS of the NPC. So we can see the U.S. citizens spend 90 cents of every dollar they earn. So our NPC is going to be 0.9. If you know your MPC is 0.9, you can easily tell that your MPS is going to be 0.1 because 0.9 plus 0.1 is going to be equal to 1. That's the first thing you do. Figure out your MPC and your MPS. And now let's go over some of these other steps. So step one we already did. We know our NPC is 0.9 over 1 because they're consuming 90% of every dollar. So it's 0.9. And our MPS is 1 minus the NPC which is 0.1. So notice that 0.9 plus 0.1 added up to 1. Next, we have to determine which multiplier to use and whether it's going to be a positive or a negative multiplier. So we have an increase in gross private investment. So it's going to be a positive spending multiplier. So whether it's a change in consumption, gross private investment, government spending, if it's a increase, then you're going to be using the spending multiplier. If the problem mentions taxation, then it's going to be the tax multiplier. In addition, if you see uh, net exports also, that would be the spending multiplier. So, we now know that we're doing the spending multiplier because we are seeing a change in gross private investment. So let's kind of go ahead and calculate that spending multiplier. So our spending multiplier is 1 over MPS, so it's 1 over 0.10. We already figured out that our MPS was 0.10. 1 over 0.10 is equal to 10, so our multiplier is now 10. Then our last step is go ahead and calculate our change to aggregate demand. And all we're going to do there is going to work, we're going to multiply our initial change in consumption, gross private investment, government spending, and exports times the spending multiplier. So looking back at the problem, you have $50 billion worth of gross private investment times the multiplier of 10, you get a grand total of $500 billion of aggregate demand or an increase in real GDP of $500 billion. We can look at it either way. So how does this show the multiplier? because that initial $50 billion increase in gross private investment, it did not only increase aggregate demand by $50 billion. Because of the multiplier, you had a $500 billion increase in aggregate demand that came from this initial change in gross private investment. All right, so let's move on to our next problem here. So we're going to assume Germany raises taxes on its citizens by 200 billion euros. And furthermore, we're going to assume that Germans save 25% of the change in the disposable income. We're going to calculate the effect of that 200 billion euro change in taxes 
on the German economy. So remember, the first thing is to figure out what your MPS and your MPC is. You can see that Germans save 25% of their disposable income, so your MPS is going to be 0.25, which means your MPC is going to be 0 0.75. 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75 is going to add up to 1. So step one, calculate the MPC and MPS. We've already done that. The MPS was given in the problem, 25%. Remember, you express that as a decimal, 0.25. Your MPC is 1 minus your MPS. 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75. So 0.75 plus 0.25 adds up to 1. Now I've got to determine which multiplier to use, whether it's positive or negative. So we can see that we have an increase in taxes. An increase in taxes is going to take money out of the circular flow. There's going to be less spending. So you're going to have a negative tax multiplier. Negative NPC over NPS. So now we've got to go ahead and calculate that tax multiplier. Okay, negative NPC over NPS. Remember your NPC was 0.75. Your NPS was 0.25. So you have negative 0.75 over 0.25. Divide those, you get negative 3. Okay, so we actually have a negative multiplier going on here. Now all we're going to do is take that multiplier times our change in taxes, and we're going to find out the change in aggregate demand or real GDP. So we have our change in taxes times our tax multiplier. So you have $200 billion, uh, excuse me, 200 billion euro change in taxes times your multiplier of negative 3, you're going to have a negative 600, bill, a negative 600 billion euro change in aggregate demand, or you could also say that real gross domestic product is going to fall by 600 billion euros. All right, one more problem here. So we're going to assume that the Japanese spend four-fifths of their disposable income. Furthermore, we're going to assume that the Japanese government increases its spending by 50 trillion yen. And in order to maintain a balanced budget, they simultaneously increase their taxes by 50 trillion yen. We're going to calculate the effect of the 50 trillion yen change in government spending and the 50 trillion yen change in taxes on Japanese aggregate demand. And so what's going on here is the government is increasing its spending by 50 trillion yen. And in order to balance the budget, they're going to go ahead and increase taxes by 50 trillion yen in order to balance the budget there. And we're going to see what happens um, to aggregate demand when that happens. So the first thing we need to do is find out what our NPC or our NPS is. So we can see the Japanese spend four-fifths of their disposable income. So our NPC is going to be 0.8. So step one is to calculate the NPC and NPS. So our NPC was four fifths. That was given in the problem. Remember, we expressed that as a decimal, so that's 0 0.80. Our NPS is 1 minus NPC. 1 minus 0 0.80 is 0 0.20. So our NPC is 0 0.8. Our NPS is 0 0.2. Now we're going to determine which multipliers to use and whether they're positive or negative. So the problem mentions an increase in government spending and an increase in taxes. So you're going to have two multipliers here. You're going to have a positive spending multiplier and a negative tax multiplier. More government spending is going to be positive. An increase in taxes is going to take money out of the circular flow. There's going to be less spending, so you're going to have a negative tax multiplier. So our spending multiplier, remember that our spending multiplier equation was 1 over MPS, and our MPS we can see there is 0 0.20. So if 1 over 0 0.20, that's equal to 5. For the tax multiplier, you're going to have negative NPC over MPS. 
Uh, you can see that our NPC is going to be 0.8, so you're going to have negative 0.8, and our NPS is 0 0.2. 0 0.8 divided by 0.2 is going to be equal to negative 4. So our spending multiplier is 5, our tax multiplier is negative 4. Now our next step is to ch uh, calculate our change in aggregate demand. So that's going to be our change in government spending times the spending multiplier plus our change in taxes times the tax multiplier. So from the problem you could see that we had a 50 trillion yen change in government spending. We're going to multiply that by the spending multiplier which is 5. So plus we have our 50 trillion yen change in taxes in order to balance the budget. And we're multiplying that by the tax multiplier, which is negative 4. So 50 trillion yen times 5 is going to be 250 trillion yen. 50 trillion yen times negative 4 is going to be negative 200 trillion yen. 250 trillion yen plus negative 200 trillion yen means you're going to have a grand total change of 50 trillion yen. So your uh, aggregate demand is going to go up by 50 trillion yen. Another way you can put that is real gross domestic product is going to be going up by 50 trillion yen after that spending increase slash increase in taxes. Now the last problem is a little bit of a pain, and there's the, actually an easier way to do it, and that is to memorize what's called the balanced budget multiplier. The balanced budget multiplier says this, that when government spending increases are matched with an equal size increase in taxes, your change um, in aggregate demand or real GDP is going to be end, end up being equal to your change in government spending. So meaning that, let's say the US government spends a trillion dollars and to balance the budget they raise taxes by a trillion dollars. Your change in aggregate demand is going to be equal to the change in government spending, which is a trillion dollars. So why is this? If you look at the equations, uh, you have 1 over NPS plus negative NPC over NPS. So that is your um, spending multiplier plus your tax multiplier, that is equal to 1 minus NPC over NPS, which is the same thing as NPS over NPS, which is equal to 1. So your balanced budget multiplier is always going to be equal to 1. So if, once again, if a government raises government spending and then raises an equal amount of taxes to balance the budget, your change in aggregate demand or real GDP is going to be equal to your change in government spending. And one important concept that is shown by this is that most economists consider the spending multiplier to be more powerful than the tax multiplier. And the reason is when you have spending, like for example when the government spends all of it is going to be spent. None of it is going to be saved. When you have a tax cut, which would also increase aggregate demand, just like an increase in government spending, some of that tax cut is going to be saved. Not necessarily all of it is going to be spent. So your tax multiplier is going to be weaker than your spending multiplier. So you might ask yourself, what does that have to do with the balanced budget multiplier? Well, notice here that in this balanced budget multiplier scenarios that you had an increase in government spending, which is going to increase aggregate demand, and you had the increase in taxes, which is going to decrease aggregate demand. But because the spending multiplier is more powerful than the tax multiplier, because all of that government spending is going to be spent fairly quickly, you are ultimately seeing an 
increase in aggregate demand or real GDP. So it is very key to remember that the spending multiplier, because it's all spent relatively quickly, is going to be more powerful than that tax multiplier. All right, so let's move on to the assessment here. So for number one, we're going to describe the spending, multipli the spending multiplier effect. What is that multiplier? Describe that for me. And we're going to go ahead and you're going to do a scenario on your own. So you're going to assume that U.S. citizens spend 60 cents for every extra dollar they earn. We're going to further assume that the federal government attempts to stimulate the economy with $1 million worth of domestic spending. We're going to cal calculate the effect of, $1 million in of the $1 million increase in government spending on U.S. aggregate demand. So once again, for this problem, you're going to go ahead and find out what your NPS is and what your NPC is. Calculate that. Know which multiplier you're going to use. Know your initial change in um, your variable, and the variable here is going to be government spending. So then you're going to calculate your multiplier, multiply that by that initial change in government spending, and boom, you have your overall change in aggregate demand or real gross domestic product. So you'll probably have to pause this in order to calculate that, but I'll move on here. And that's we're moving on to summary. So in a paragraph, we're going to, go, going to go ahead and describe what we learned today. I'll check this tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.